Hi, welcome to another Science with Missy Scullion. Today we're making kaleidoscopes. For this you will need some scissors some coloured pens or pencils some plain paper some kitchen foil some cardboard Hi everyone and welcome to another Science with Missy Scullion video and of course my glamorous assistant Isla Hi And today we're going to be showing you how to make Kaleidoscopes So for kaleidoscopes you are going to need Some glue You're going to need a wee glue stick some scissors if you're using these please make sure you've got an adult about to help you. Some kitchen foil. We've got some tin foil here. We definitely need one that's got a very shiny side. Card. So we need some card. If you've got um, A4 card lying about that's great. If not some packaging from a parcel you've had delivered, an old cereal box, any of these things will work. Some pens. So we've got some coloured pens but coloured pencils or crayons will work just as well and some paper. Preferably something that's quite see-through and quite thin. Um, tracing paper is ideal um, but as long as it's quite thin and you can get a sense of some light through it that'll work just as well. So how does a kaleidoscope work? That's a great question, Ayla. So a kaleidoscope works on the movement of light. Um, light moves in a straight line called rays. So the sun shines light down on our earth and it travels in a straight line called sun rays. When they reach earth, we're able to change the direction of those rays of light by using shiny surfaces. Those shiny surfaces like mirrors or water are able to reflect light. And what happens is the light comes down and hits the shiny surface and it bounces right off it. And that bounce is called reflection. And we're able to move and change the direction of the light. Now, this light bouncing off these shiny surfaces helps create some great pictures when we make a kaleidoscope. So to make our kaleidoscope, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of card and we're going to fold it in half. Now it doesn't have to be exact, but as close as you can make it because we're going to be making a triangular prism. So when you've folded your card in half, make sure that you give that crease a really good heart press so you've got a nice sharp crease mark there. So when we come to fold everything up together, it folds nicely. Okay, now once you've folded it in half, I want you to open up that piece of card and I want you to take the edge and fold it in to that centre crease that you've just made. So what you're doing is effectively dividing your card into quarters, into four equal parts. Again, make sure that that crease is nice and tight and nice and crisp so that all the edges fold over really easily. So you need to do that on both sides from the outside folding in to the middle crease. We manage that okay? Great. Once you've done that you need to open up your card and you need to get your glue stick and we're going to cover our card in glue because what we're going to do is we're going to stick our tin foil onto our card because our tin foil is a reflective surface that we are going to use to bounce the light and change the direction of those light rays. So you want to make sure you've got plenty of glue on it so that the tin foil sticks. So make sure you've got all the edges. It doesn't need to be covered completely, but make sure there's enough to make sure that it all sticks. Does the foil have to be smooth? Well, light bounces off the surface. So if it's a little bit bumpy, it will still work. 
but the smoother the surface, the better. When a surface is smooth and the light rays come down, they bounce and reflect in one direction. But if your surface is all bumpy, then that reflection goes in lots of different ways and those rays of light bounce in different directions. So it's better if it's smooth, but it isn't essential for what we're doing today. Okay, so when you go to stick your tin foil down, make sure you stick the kind of matte surface down. So the shiny surface is facing up. So I'll give you a wee hand. So we've cut our, our foil already, just to the same size as our card. So if you just make sure everything is stuck down nice and smoothly and covers the majority of your card, and you can see that we have a nice shiny surface and you can see our three crease marks, which is gonna make the next stage really, really easy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make this into a triangular prism. And that involves us folding the creases to make a triangle and then folding that last edge over. Whoops. So what we're gonna do is on one end, we are going to cover this part in glue. So we're gonna take our glue stick again. Okay. And we're gonna get plenty of glue in at this time. What you might want to do is maybe pop a little bit of sellotape on it just to make sure that it stays down. Okay, so we fold that up into our triangle and we fold that last quarter down to create our edge. If you're using just glue, maybe hold it for a little while. If not, I would suggest a little bit of sticky tape just over the edges there just to make sure it sticks. Now, of course, you can decorate the outside of your kaleidoscope if you want. You can color it in with your pens, draw some cool designs. We've just gone for some black card today, so you're not gonna do that. Okay, so I've just popped a couple of little bit sticky tape on there just to keep it closed because the glue wasn't quite strong enough and it kept popping up there for us. So, Isla, if you have a wee look in there, what can you see? I can see right through it, but it's a little bit bright inside. So it's quite bright inside and that's because that foil is starting to reflect those rays of light. One of the great things about kaleidoscopes is you can use that light to change some images. So we've drawn just a little image, just a circle with some different colours. And if we hold it up to the light at the end of our kaleidoscope, You can see lots of different pictures and what I'll do is I'll add some pictures of what we can see down our kaleidoscope at the end of our film. So how does the mirror make so many images? Well, it's a good question. What happens is that those rays of light are bouncing off the mirrored surface. Because we've made a contained space and it's a triangular prism, those images are constantly reflecting off of each other. So the image is bouncing around each of those three. It's a bit like when you hold a mirror and look at another mirror. It seems like never ending mirrors. And what happens with the kaleidoscope is when you look down the kaleidoscope at the image and the light shines in it, the image that's at the bottom bounces off one edge, then the other, and then the other and that reflection in straight lines. And that continues and continues, creating lots of different shapes and patterns. One of the great things you can do with a kaleidoscope is to take it outside and have a look at some of the things that are round about. When you get quite close, the patterns will bounce around the inside of your kaleidoscope. So an alternative to using pictures or going outside and having a look at things in the garden or on one of your walks is that you can make it a self-contained kaleidoscope. What you need to do is either to add some cellophane or some cling film from the kitchen and pop it around the end of your kaleidoscope. You could use like a poly pocket or something um, and just make sure that it covers the end of your kaleidoscope. You could use an elastic band or you could use some sellotape just to stick that down, just to make sure that what you put in doesn't come out. 
once you're sure that's covered and it's secure, you could add some little gems or some little sequins and then I would suggest you cover the top end as well. But what you then have is these colours that are bouncing the light and reflecting that alongside of your shiny foil and it makes for some pretty cool pictures too. What do you think? So we hope you have enjoyed our video about making kaleidoscopes and hopefully you will get some fun out of it too. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Here are some pictures from inside our kaleidoscope. What pictures or patterns can you make? Thank you for watching. Remember you can stay up to date by following us on our social media channels. We're on Facebook, YouTube and Twitter.